97% of scientists agree that global temperatures have increased during the past 100 years. 84% say they personally acknowledge that human-induced warming is happening. But it turns out that they're either all either liars or they're incompetent. And that is exactly the argument you're making when you claim that global warming isn't a real thing. Look, before I get into this, let me explain that these are the common arguments presented against climate change or global warming or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Arguments against human-caused climate change range from stupid to all the way really stupid. Now, I'm not going to waste time refuting the really stupid ones like this one. How long will it take for the, for, for the uh, sea level to rise two feet? I mean, think about it. If your ice cube melts in your glass, it doesn't overflow. It's displacement. I mean, this is the thing, some of the things that they're talking about mathematically and scientifically don't make sense. Are you f***ing kidding me? While the overwhelming majority of scientists agree that climate change is happening, for some people, a mere scientific consensus simply isn't enough. Those bold skeptics point to geocentrism, the one-time scientific consensus that the Sun and other planets revolved around the Earth. As you know, Galileo and Copernicus and other truth-seekers disproved geocentrism. Except, even within the scientific community, those who dispute a human cause to climate change still agree that climate change is happening, despite placing the blame elsewhere. And also, the scientific community in that era was heavily influenced by the Catholic Church, but that's understandable. Why wouldn't you be when you're disputing the church doctrine and that means you're going to face the wrath of the Inquisition and a possible appointment with the rack? Today, instead of an all-powerful church telling us the sun revolves around the earth, we're confronted with conservative think tanks intentionally spreading misinformation about climate change at the behest of the powerful oil industry. So if you believe that the scientific consensus and thousands of papers written on climate change are bullshit, you're not Galileo. You're not even Gallagher, you're just a fucking idiot. You may have also heard about a laughable attempt to undermine climate science called the Petition Project. This was launched as a counter to the scientific consensus on climate change and to undermine the Kyoto Protocol that seeks to reduce carbon emissions. This petition included signatures from 31,000 alleged scientists who dispute man-made climate change. Even a cursory glance at the names on this list reveals that a signer's scientific credentials weren't exactly too important. Many have degrees in fields ranging from such disparate concentrations as physics and linguistics, which have nothing to do with climate change. It also appears that getting one's name on the list required about as much verification as signing up for an iTunes account, if, if that at all. Some of the names appearing on the first week included such eminent scientific minds as Dr. Redwine and Dr. Gary Hallowell, who, as you may or may not know, is a fucking Spice Girl. But who knows, maybe she's a well-regarded scientist on Spice World. Myth number two, there hasn't been any statistical global warming in the past 17 years and the prediction models used by the UN and others are greatly exaggerated. Now this claim is based off of a Christopher Monckton paper published in a Chinese journal that stated that global warming models created by computer performed calculations were greatly exaggerated and the increase in CO2 levels in global temperature amounted to less than half of what the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and United Nations have predicted. This is wrong. Except that Moncton examined a much smaller length of time, not the multiple decades he should have. Plus, he's been ripped to shreds by the same scientific community for cherry-picking data. But obviously, these scientists are probably only arguing with his methods because they seek to create a world where nerds rule or whatever other twisted logic climate change deniers point to when looking for an ulterior motive behind the global consensus that climate change is in fact real. Myth number three. Arctic ice is actually up 50% since 2012, and there's more Arctic ice now than there was decades ago. So obviously, climate change is a myth. I'm just going to refer to NASA on this one. People have looked at the Antarctic increasing trend and used that to suggest that global warming isn't happening, or that the increase in the Antarctic is offsetting the decrease in the Arctic. Uh, and that's simply not true. If you look at just the, simply the magnitudes of the changes we're seeing, in the winter time, the Arctic is decreasing about twice as fast as what the Antarctic is increasing. Look, Antarctica and the Arctic are two very different environments. One's a continent surrounded by ocean, the other is ocean enclosed by land. Because of this, sea ice behaves very differently in the two regions, and the record high sea ice in Antarctica cannot compensate for the rapid loss of sea ice in the Arctic Ocean. God, 
Debating whether climate change is real is like debating whether the Earth is spherical, or if gravity exists, or if Taylor Swift and Tom Hiddleston's relationship was a sham all along. It was. It really was. But with one in four Americans still skeptical about climate change, we must do our part here to educate those of us who are being actively misled. Now, most skepticism about climate change is rooted in the oil industry's PR efforts, modeled on the way that tobacco companies sought to sow confusion among the general public over whether smoking was dangerous or not. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose designed to promote the idea that there is no scientific consensus on climate change, when there is. They did so even though their own internal investigations showed decades ago that burning of fossil fuels was causing and would continue to cause rises in global temperatures. So when that independent thinker bravely contradicts scientific consensus, he or she is likely just following a script that the oil companies wrote decades ago. Except. Unlike the scientists on the oil company's payroll, those proud skeptics aren't even getting paid to shill for the oil industry. So they're really not skeptics so much as they are, well, suckers. For more on the oil industry's knowledge of carbon emissions effect on the environment, check out the other video I did a while back. It's called Big Oil is More Evil Than We Thought. I will link the link in the comment section below and in the description for those of you on YouTube. I'm Hassan Piker, and this is The Breakdown.